Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. I'm 26 and I live in Indiana. Today I have a few Christmas book recommendations for you guys. I absolutely love reading and I love Christmas time. This is my first ever book recommendation video that I am posting on my channel. I absolutely love reading. I read all the time in my free time. I have a ton of friends and family members that text me and ask for book recommendations or just ask what I'm reading lately. And so I thought I would make a video for you guys. I'm basically in the tree at this point. Um, my couch is right behind me. I can't move back any further and I can't move this way because I'll be bumping into the tree. So that's what we're working with today. I have 14 books in total that I'm going to share with you guys. 11 of them I have read and I read them last Christmas time. Three of them I have not gotten to read yet this season. I am currently finishing up the Midnight Library, which is very good. I definitely recommend that one for a non-Christmas themed book. So I have a lot of Debbie Macomber books. Um, this one is called The Perfect Christmas. It says, for Cassie Beaumont, it's meeting her perfect match. Cassie, at 33, wants a husband and kids, and so far, nothing's worked. Not blind dates, not the internet, and certainly not leaving love to chance. So she hires professional matchmaker Simon Dodson. He's very expensive and very choosy about the clients he takes on, but he's got a great reputation. Cassie's astonished when he agrees to work with her. Simon assigns her three tasks to complete before she meets her perfect mate. Being a charity bell ringer, dressing up a Santa's elf at a mall, and preparing a traditional turkey dinner for her neighbors, most of whom she happens to dislike. Despite a number of mishaps, Cassie does it all, and she's finally ready to meet her match. And he turns out to be a wonderful surprise, just like the perfect Christmas gift. One of my favorite parts about the perfect Christmas is that at the end it has a ton of recipes. There's a Christmas Eve eggnog recipe in here, crock pot chicken chili, five minute cranberry walnut cobbler. The next book is by Debbie Macomber. It's called Jingle All the Way. This says, trapped in the middle of five siblings, Everly Lancaster always had big dreams. Now a top real estate executive, Everly's work leaves no space for anything or anyone else in her life. Sensing her stress, her boss insists that she takes December off and take a trip. At first, a month away seems crazy, but Everly's mother convinces her otherwise. Plus, when she returns, she'll have no excuse to skip family Christmas like she did last year. But after her vengeful assistant books like Guided Cruise in the Amazon instead of the luxury beach vacation she expected, Everly is horrified to realize that she's about to spend two weeks trapped in a rainforest. Not even Asher Adams, the ship's charming naturalist, can convince Everly that the trip will be unforgettable. But slowly, she realizes that he is right. The sights are spectacular. And with each passing day, Everly's relationship with Asher deepens. But as the cruise nears its end and Everly's family Christmas approaches, both must decide if love is worth the risk. A merry surprise might be in store for this heartfelt novel. So the next book is The Christmas Wedding Guest by Susan Mallory. And this is one of my favorites. This is definitely a, you know, girl comes back to the hometown, meets the boy she was in love with in high school. They reconnect, you know, that kind of storyline, which those are my absolute favorite. And I feel like that's what every single Hallmark Christmas movie is like, which I'm a sucker for Hallmark movies. I'll read the back of this one for you guys. The Somerville sisters believe in love, but they've lost faith it will happen for them. Reggie hasn't been home since the end of the world's shortest engagement. When her parents decided to renew their vows, she buffs up her twinkle to help with the Christmas wedding. Unexpectedly, Toby, her first love, is back too, and the spark between them shines as brightly as ever. In the spirit of the season, will they let go of past hurts and greet the new year together? Done waiting for the one. Dina is pregnant and on her own, on purpose, but then a gorgeous sad-eyed songwriter checks into a room at her inn. Micah, unable to write since he lost his wife, finds inspiration in Dina's determination to be a mom. One snowflake speckled kiss and he's a goner, but Dina is afraid to believe that a rock star could fall for a cookie-cutter small-town girl like her. This is literally like a freaking Hallmark movie and I am obsessed with it. This was one of my favorite books that I read last Christmas. So the next book is called An Unexpected Groom and this is by Ruth Logan Hearn. This was one that I read last Christmas that I'm gonna be honest I don't really remember quite that well. I was really attracted to the whole like Christmas wedding theme last year when I was preparing to get married to Brock. The back of this reads Kimberly Gallagher's back in town to run her mother's thriving wedding business. For a seasoned pro like Kimberly, fixing the high stress nuptials of a senator's daughter is no problem. But facing former police officer Drew Slade, the senator's security chief, and her brother's former partner is not what she signed up for. Drew knows that Kimberly blames him for her brother's tragic death, but to single dad Drew, Kimberly feels like coming home. And despite her best efforts, Kimberly can't help falling for him. Will their past continue to keep them apart, or will an unexpected truth reveal their happily ever after? So this is kind of ringing some bells for me. I honestly don't remember that much, so this would be one 
So I would recommend a little, but not a lot. <laughs> Okay, so here's another Debbie Macomber book. This is called Christmas in Alaska, and it's two stories that kind of mesh together and become one. Both of these stories are based in Alaska. So this is more of a spicy read, if you know what I mean. Um, this is a very good book. I love this one. I love both the stories and how they tie together towards the end. The first one is called The Mail Order Bride. After being jilted by her fiance, Caroline Myers needs cheering up. So her aunt sends her to Gold River, Alaska on what she thinks is a vacation but her aunts have something different in mind and Caroline finds herself married to rugged Paul Trevor. It's obviously a misunderstanding but can Paul make her see that it might also be a wish come true? And then the next one is The Snow Bride. Unusually practical, Jenna Campbell impulsively heads to Alaska to marry a man she met on the internet but on the flight to Fairbanks she meets Reed Jameson who's determined to show her she's making a mistake. Reed changes Jenna's destination, and so she finds herself in his cabin in Tiny Snowbound. That leaves her stuck with Reed, a bunch of eccentric old men and a few grizzly bears. But as she gets to know Reed, she realizes she might become a Christmas bride after all. Also, a Christmas book that I read last year that I don't have on hand because I'm letting a friend borrow it um, is called Let It Snow. And there's a movie about it on Netflix. They made it a couple years ago, I believe. I read the book first. It is quite literally three different Christmas stories, but they all wrap together in one, just like this book does, which those are some of my favorite books. I love how authors like do different stories and tie them all together. So the next book is Mistletoe and Mr. Right by Sarah Morgan. This is a super cute, easy read. The back says, how the moose almost stole Christmas. Lana Montgomery is everything the quirky small town of Moose Springs, Alaska can't stand. A rich socialite with dreams of changing things for the better, but Lana is determined to prove that she belongs even if it means trading her stilettos for snow boots and tracking one of the town's most hairiest Christmas mysteries, the Santa Moose. An altered Grinch hellbent on destroying every bit of holiday cheer and tinsel it can seek its teeth into. The last few years have been tough on Rick Harding, and things aren't getting any easier now that his dream girl's back in town. When Lana accidentally tranquilizes him instead of the Santa Moose, it's clear she needs help fast, and this could be his chance to finally catch her eye. It's an all-out Christmas war, but if they can nab that darn moose before it destroys the town, Rick and Lena might finally find a place where they belong together. So the next five books that I'm going to share with you guys are definitely my top favorites that I read last Christmas. The first one is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This one is quite literally like a Hallmark Christmas movie where two twin sisters switch places. I believe one is a baker. Let's read the back. When chef Charlie Goodwin gets hit on the head on the LA set of her reality baking show, she loses her critical ability to taste and smell. Meanwhile, Charlie's identical twin Cass is frantically trying to hold her own life together back in their quaint mountain hometown while running the family's bakery and dealing with a breakup that just won't end. With only days until Christmas, a desperate Charlie and Cass do something they haven't done since they were kids. They switch places. But when rugged firefighter Jake Greenman and gorgeous physician assistant Miguel Rodriguez are thrown into the mix, will the twins' identity swap be a recipe for disaster or for getting their lives back on track? And one of the reviews literally says it's like Gilmore Girls meets the Parent Trap means Cake Wars. In other words, it's perfect. This is literally exactly how I would describe it. Those are the best reviews. That's the best way to describe this book. Highly recommend this one. So the next book that is in my top five for last year is The 12 Dates of Christmas by Ginny Bayless. So this is based in England and the main girl, Kate Turner, she's 34. She signs up for this dating arrangement where she goes on 12 dates it's called the 12 dates of christmas so she dates 12 different guys and she basically determines which one she likes the best and which one she connects with the best the next book in my top five is a debbie macomber book which we're not surprised this one is called dear santa this book is very much a rom-com type book it's in old friends become new lovers type situation. Lindy Carmichael isn't feeling particularly joyful when she returns home to Winnichi, Washington for Christmas. The man she thought was the one cheated on her with her best friend and she feels completely devoid of creativity in her graphic design job. Not even carolers or Christmas cookies can cheer her up, but Lindy's mother Ellen remembers an old tradition that might lift her daughter's spirits. Reading through a box of childhood letters to Santa and reminiscing about what she'd wish for as a young girl may just be the inspiration that Lindy needs. With Ellen's encouragement, she decides to write a new letter to Santa, one that will encourage her to have faith and believe just as she'd done all those years ago. Little does Lindy know that this exercise in gratitude will cause her wishes to unfold before her in miraculous ways. 
and thanks to some fateful twists of Christmas magic, especially an unexpected connection with a handsome former classmate, Lindy ultimately realizes that there is truly no place like home for the holidays. All right, so the fourth book that is one of my top five favorites from last Christmas is The Santa Suit, and this is by Mary Kay Andrews. This is kind of a mystery meets Hallmark movie. When newly divorced Ivy Perkins buys an old farmhouse sight unseen, she is definitely looking for a change in her life. The farmhouse, called the Four Roses, is a labor of love, but Ivy didn't bargain for just how much labor it entailed. Their previous family left so much furniture and junk that it's a full-time job sorting through it. At the top of the closet, Ivy finds an old Santa suit, beautifully made and decades old. In the pocket, there's a note written in childish hand. It's from a little girl who had one Christmas wish, and that was for her father to return home from the war. This discovery sets Ivy off on a mission. Who wrote the note? Did the man ever come home? What mysteries did the Rose family hold? Ivy's quest rolls her into the community at a time when all she wants to do is to be left alone to nurse her wounds. But the magic of Christmas makes miracles happen, and Ivy might just find more than she ever thought possible. A welcoming town, a family reunited, a mystery unsolved, and a second chance at love. I also love the design of this book. I'm a sucker for the way that books look. I definitely want to judge a book by its cover because I always go for the pretty ones. So the last book of my top five which this is not like number five this is just i like them all very much the same this is a really really good one that i read last year it's called the christmas shopaholic by sophie kinsella this is very much like shopaholic meets hallmark christmas movie but in the best way possible tis the season for change and becky brandon nay bloomwood is embracing it returning from the states to live in the charming village of leatherby and working with her best friend suze and they give shop up suze's stately home life is good especially now that becky takes time every day for mindfulness even if that means listening to meditation while hunting down online bargains but becky still adores the traditions of christmas her parents hosting carols playing on repeat her mother pretending she made the Christmas pudding, and the neighbors coming around for Sherry in their terrible holiday sweaters. Things are looking cheerier than ever, until Becky's parents announce they're moving to the ultra-trendy Shoreditch, unable to resist the draw of craft beer and smashed avocados, and ask Becky if she'll host this year. What could possibly go wrong? Becky's sister demands a vegan turkey. Her husband insists he just wants aftershave again. And little Minnie needs a very specific picnic camper. Surely Becky can manage all of this, as well as the surprise appearance of an old boyfriend turned rock star and his pushy new girlfriend, whose motives are far from clear. But as the countdown to Christmas begins and her big-hearted plans take an unexpected turn toward disaster, Becky wonders if chaos will ensue or if she'll manage to bring comfort and joy to Christmas after all. Okay, and then the last three books that I have, I have not gotten to read yet this year. These are books that I bought a few months ago and I'm waiting to finish the Midnight Library before I start these. So the first book that I have for this new Christmas season is Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Ginny Bayless. A city bookshop owner heads to the English countryside for a holiday reunion only to face her childhood enemy. So this is very much like an enemy to lovers trope, which I love. Eleanor Noel, Nori for short, is quite content running her secondhand bookshop in London. Forever torn between her working class upbringing and her classmates' extravagant lifestyles at the posh private school she attended on scholarship, Nori has finally figured out how to keep both at equal distance. So when two of her oldest friends invite their whole gang to spend the time leading up to their wedding together at the castle near their old school, Nori must prepare herself for an emotionally complicated few days. The reunion brings back fond memories, but also requires Nori to dodge an ill-advised former fling. When she falls quite literally into the arms of Isaac, the castle's head gardener, who has nothing but contempt for the snobby prep school kids. The attraction between them is undeniable, and as Nori spends more time with Isaac during the wedding festivities, she finds herself falling hard for the boy she used to consider an enemy. Nori and Isaac explore their common ground, but pressures mount on all sides, and Nori must decide what kind of life she wants to live and what sort of love is worth the risk. That seems super cute, and I'm excited to read that. Next book that I have is Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Ginny Colgan. I honestly picked this up in love the front cover. Also, a cupcake cafe sounds amazing. Life is sweet for Izzy Randall, owner of the Cupcake Cafe. Taught how to bake by her beloved late grandfather, she is proudly carrying on the family tradition at her London eatery. Not only is the business thriving, the icing on the cupcake is that she also happens to be head over heels in love. Plus, she's surrounded and supported by close friends, even if her cupcake colleagues Pearl and Caroline don't seem quite as upbeat about their upcoming season of snow and merriment. But when her boyfriend Austin is scouted for a possible move to New York, Izzy is forced to contemplate the prospect of a long-distance romance. 
And when the Christmas rush at the cafe, with its increased demand for her delectable creations, begins to take its toll, Izzy has to decide what she holds most dear. This December, Izzy will have to rely on all her reserves of calm, courage, and cinnamon to make sure everyone has a Merry Christmas, one way or another. This sounds very cute, and I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm guessing that her and the boyfriend probably won't last. There's probably gonna be some hot man that comes into the cafe and like whisks her away off her feet. Okay, this next one is Christmas at Silver Falls by Jenny Hale. The back says, ever since Scarlet Bailey was a little girl, White Oaks Inn has been the heart of her Christmas. Each holiday, her grandmother fills the old-fashioned hotel with the scents of cinnamon and chocolate. But this year will be the Bailey's last Christmas there, unless Scarlett can convince Charlie Bryant, a handsome, successful property developer, to invest in her beloved inn. Charlie's plans for the holidays don't include getting involved with the people of Silver Falls. No matter how determined Scarlett is to show him the importance of White Oaks Inn to the guests who return every year. But neither business-minded Charlie nor impulsive Scarlett can deny sleigh bells ring when they meet. As they spend time together amid much-loved traditions of baking cookies and decorating the tree, Scarlett begins to realize that despite his rough exterior, Charlie has a lot of love to give, but can she convince him to open his heart to the true meaning of Christmas before the end is lost forever? This seems very much like a Hallmark movie I would watch. So those are just three of the new books that I got for this Christmas. I'm gonna order a lot more once I get paid in a few weeks. So once I have read these three books and I get all my other books in that I'm gonna have for the holiday season, I'll do a second Christmas book recommendation video for you guys. That way I can give you the review of these three books that I've read and show you the other books that I have in mind that I want to read this season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my first ever book video that I'm posting on my channel. So I'm kind of new to it and I'm not really sure how to go about my book videos, but I'm learning. So please just bear with me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like any of these books, please do not hesitate to go to my Amazon storefront. They're all listed under the book section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe because I have tons of fun holiday content coming soon. As you can see, I already have my Amazon wishlist video, and I have a tour of my house and me decorating my house for Christmas, so go check those out if you're interested, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.